Let me say happy snowy Sunday morning to all of our New Life family and uh, all of our friends on Facebook, whoever gets the chance to watch this and see it. And uh, we do want to just ask if you would share it today. Uh, once you see this, share it to everybody that you can. Uh, we know it's snowing outside uh, and the roads are a little messy. And the one thing that I hate to do more than anything, uh, and you guys know that, is to have to cancel, uh, especially a Sunday morning service. Uh, but it is what it is, and the Lord made preparation for that this morning. And so uh, Michael and I are over the church. I wanted to swing by here this morning and just uh, try to uh, give you just a little word of encouragement, if I can today, uh, to try to help you out uh, on this Sunday morning. And I decided to come and do it in the old sanctuary this morning. Uh, I've not been in here to actually preach or uh, anything in a good while. Uh, this is where we hold our uh, men's uh, Sunday school class and also where the youth meet on Wednesday night. Uh, but this is also the place uh, where a lot of things were birthed here for New Life Baptist Church. And a lot of prayer meetings in this old sanctuary, a lot of worship in this old sanctuary. And I don't even like really using the terminology uh, old sanctuary because it's still special to us uh, but a lot of things happened in this place and so I was up this morning just reading studying praying and uh, Michael and I coming over here I said I'm gonna just go in the old sanctuary and uh, get back behind that old pulpit again uh, where God did mighty wonders and mighty works for us here uh, at the church and we were so blessed uh, in this particular sanctuary here and uh, we still love it and we thank God that it's still being used today uh, for a lot of things uh, and we want to continue to use it and so we're going to come to you today from uh, the sanctuary here uh, at the church and try to help you out and uh, in just a little while we're going to uh, pray and just beg God to help us uh, through this day but uh, as all of our people know uh, we've been teaching here on prayer or preaching on prayer these last couple of Sundays here uh, at the church. And uh, I want to continue that today if I can and uh, try to bring to you uh, maybe just a little short message here to uh, give you that little, uh, I ain't going to say shot in the arm today, we'll give you a shot in the heart today uh, about prayer uh, because we do miss you. We love our church, we love our church family. Uh, and man, I miss it when we cannot be together in worship because I love worship with our people. And so as you tune in, I'll try not to keep you long and so that you don't fall asleep in front of the TV trying to watch this. And so we'll, we'll make it short and quick as we can, but as most encouraging as we can uh, to try to help you out. We've been preaching from Luke chapter number 11. There's many verses here. Uh, that we can deal with, but we've dealt mainly with this one verse here in verse number one, uh, where that Jesus was praying, and the Bible says here that he was praying in a certain place, and uh, Lord willing, if we get to that point today, uh, we want to talk about the place of prayer. Uh, we've talked about a lot of things here, but he was in a certain place here uh, praying, and the Bible says he ceased. He stopped praying. He finished his prayer uh, here, and his disciples were around him, uh, and they were encouraged by his prayer. Uh, chances are they were very convicted by his prayer uh, and what he had said, and after his prayer, the disciples said to him, here, teach us to pray. Uh, and then they went on to say, as John taught his disciples, uh, they had watched the life of John the Baptist. They had watched him uh, in some way teach his disciples how to pray and the people around him how to pray. And now they were encouraged themselves uh, to pray. And the one thing that I've told our church these last couple of weeks of preaching on, uh, on this matter here is that I realized where my failure was in 2021. Uh, and maybe even before that. Uh, is probably in prayer. Uh, and I've said this numerous times already. Not that I did not pray. Uh, I don't remember a day that I didn't pray, and sometimes several times a day, uh, but I don't think I prayed enough. Uh, 
And some days I don't think I prayed uh, fervently. And some days I don't think I prayed uh, in the right heart or the right spirit or diligently enough in the matters that we were praying over. And so we wanted to start 2022 out uh, with prayer. Uh, I believe it's the one thing that's missing in the home uh, that we need more of. It is the one thing that's missing in our churches uh, that we need more of. Uh, and no doubt it's missing in our personal lives uh, because personally we need prayer every day. And so there's families out there that's going through struggles and trials. There's kids uh, today, teenagers, uh, youth, uh, that need us to pray. And they need us to set that example to the point where they maybe even would look at us as pastors, as uh, deacons, as Sunday school teachers, as church members, uh, and say, teach us how to pray or just in general teach us to pray. And so that's the one thing that we are trying to get across in this message uh, for 2022 to start this year out. And uh, I pray that God will take this and use this in our church uh, and for everyone that sees this, that this year uh, we would determine uh, in our hearts to be a better prayer warrior than we've ever been in our entire lives. Uh, we would seek God's face, seek God's will, uh, seek God's, uh, just whatever God would have us to do uh, in our life for Him. And so through that, I, I've taken several examples from this and several lessons from this that I've shared with the church, mainly uh, starting out with the priority of prayer and how that we ought to prioritize prayer uh, in our life. And we talked about uh, what that priority consists of and we looked at the very fact that John the Baptist prayed and the very fact that Jesus prayed uh, and how important it was to them and that if it was important enough for Jesus to pray, the Son of God, John the Baptist, the, the greatest prophet uh, that was ever mentioned in the Word of God. And the, the fact that if it was important enough for them to pray, uh, then it definitely should be important for you and I to pray. And the fact that we should prioritize that uh, in our lives. That, that ought to be that time we just set a, set a time uh, that it becomes priority uh, and realize that our lives and what we do uh, depend on our prayer. And uh, in that, we can find Jesus and the things that uh, we need in our lives. Now, I mentioned all the time that Jesus prayed. I won't go into all that today, but many, many times the Lord Jesus Christ himself uh, prayed. So the priority of prayer, we mentioned the pattern of prayer uh, and how that pattern really uh, depends on how God answers prayer. Uh, and in that pattern, we mentioned several things. Uh, it, it, uh, that pattern depends on our relationship uh, with God. We must have uh, a good relationship with God in order to pray. We can't pray out of the will of God outside of praying a prayer of repentance uh, to get us back in the will of God. Uh, then our prayer lives are, are just about useless or meaningless uh, without being in the will of God and having that relationship uh, with God. And, and as I said last week, uh, our Father, which art in heaven, is what the Bible says here in verse number two when he teaches how to pray, is we have to understand that we have that personal relationship. And I said last week, uh, listen, nobody had to tell me who my father was or who my daddy was. I grew up knowing he was my daddy and I called him uh, my daddy over and over again. Uh, when I need something. It's the same thing with the Lord. We need a relationship uh, with the Lord in, in order to pray. Not only that, there was a responsibility in prayer. Uh, that responsibility was that we honor God, that we honor God's kingdom, uh, and that we honor God's will uh, in our prayer. Not just vain words or, or, or loose words. And, and I mentioned this statement in the midst of that, that prayer is not telling God what we want and then selfishly enjoying it. Uh, prayer is asking God to use us to accomplish what he wants so that his name is glorified uh, in all that we do. And so we need a relationship with God and then we need to have a responsibility in our prayer of honoring God, honoring his kingdom, uh, and honoring his will. I also said that in order to pray, you pray right uh, and to get uh, our request known unto God and get our request answered from God uh, is we have to have some type of revelation of the word of God. 
what I'm saying in that is it's very important for Christians to understand uh, and to know uh, as much scripture as possible, to understand the word of God, uh, to have that scripture hidden down in our heart so that we can pray in God's will because it would be God's will for us to be according to what his word says uh, in our life. If we don't understand the word of God and we don't know the word of God, then we can pray very selfishly. Uh, we could pray for things that would be out of the will of God and not ask for God's will to be done. So we need to know uh, the word of God and make sure, John 15, 7 says, if ye abide in me and my word abide in you, uh, ye shall ask what you will, uh, and he's going to answer it and uh, give it to us. But we have to understand that we need to ask according to God's will and according to uh, God's word. If not, then we're definitely going to ask uh, selfishly from uh, our, our own heart and our own mind uh, in what we want. So we, we need to have that relationship with God. We need to be responsible in our prayer of upholding the will of God and, and the kingdom of God. We need to have a revelation of the word of God, have some word hid down in our heart uh, so that uh, we can ask to, uh, in the right way for the right things uh, that God can have uh, in our lives. If not, we're going to get a lot of silent answers from God when God don't answer uh, a lot of times it's because we are not praying uh, in the right way and we're not praying for the right things. And that silent answer so many times uh, is the answer of no. Uh, the other, the other God says, I'm not hearing this. You know you need to be praying for the will of God uh, in your life. Then we talked about last week, persistence in prayer uh, and how we're to pray persistently. Uh, and that's one thing that I have worked on in my life for months and months and months now. Uh, is just not giving up uh, in prayer and just continuing to ask God. Uh, uh, it's kind of like I, I mentioned maybe last week, that little child that keeps nugging on your, uh, tugging on your pants leg and tugging on your pants leg and tugging on your uh, shirt tail and going, Daddy, can I? Or Daddy, can I? Or Mama, uh, can I? Mama, please. And after a while, we're like, okay, okay. You begged, you begged. Okay, we're going we gonna, to, all right, all right, we're going to go ahead and let you do this. Uh, and see how it works. But it is that persistence in prayer. And uh, we mentioned that here out of Luke chapter number uh, 11 in verses 5 through 8, where uh, the man showed up at the other, another man's door late at night. Uh, and the Bible says because of his importunity or his unashamedness to continue to ask and beg uh, the man, that the man finally got up and helped him. And I did mention this last week, and I want to just reiterate this because it's very important here uh, that we understand what I'm saying uh, in this is that uh, in the basic laws in that time in, in the Old Testament and back in those days, it was important that you met that request if somebody came to your door begging. Uh, and if you did not help those people, then uh, that whole village or, or your family, everybody would shun you because it was wrong uh, for you not to entertain a guest uh, at that time. And so we determined through that that the man that was in the house there in Luke 11, 5 through 8, the man that was in the house, his reputation was at stake because somebody was asking him to do something uh, for them. And had he not done that, uh, then his reputation would have been no, of no good at all. And so we use that in the ideology here of you and I asking God and being persistent in our prayer life that it's God's reputation at stake here uh, in how he answers that prayer and whether he answers that prayer or not. And that's why I think God is so careful to uh, be patient uh, with us a lot of times, uh, to not answer so quick, uh, to not give us every little thing that we ask for because he knows that we ask amiss uh, and we ask selfishly uh, sometimes, and sometimes we ask out of anxiety uh, and wrong feelings. And so sometimes God is just patient, and we continue to knock, continue to knock, and God then answers uh, because his uh, reputation is at stake in how he answers that prayer. And God is not going to answer a selfish prayer and give us what uh, we would want in our selfish life 
and uh, God is not going to give us those things that would endanger us or things that would uh, not, or things that may have hurt our reputation as a Christian. And so God, there's some things that God blocks along the way, just not uh, answer. But his reputation is at stake uh, in the midst of all of that. Uh, one writer put it this way, uh, talking about persistence in prayer, that it is not an attempt to change God's mind. And so many times, as I said, the, the little boy or the little girl uh, tugging on our shirt tail or tugging on our pants leg, and we've already said no, 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 uh, they are making an attempt uh, to change our mind uh, so that they can get what they want. But our persistence in prayer should not be an attempt to change the mind of God because our prayer should be in order to honor God's will, we have to pray thy will be done. And so it should not be that attempt where if I keep asking God, God will change his mind. We should be keep asking God for this reason right here is it, it gets us to the place where God can trust us with the answer. And instead of saying, okay, God, if I, boy, if I pursue this long enough, and if I'm persistent long enough, then you will change your mind. I'll be able to change your mind, and you'll say yes uh, to what I want. But what God does in his patient delivery uh, of an answer sometimes, he gets us to the place where we're asking till we finally say, okay, God, thy will be done. Uh, I want whatever you want in my life. I realize I'm asking a miss. Uh, I realize, Father, I'm going off on a limb here. Uh, I just want your will to be done. And then God knows that he has gotten us to a place uh, where he can trust us with an answer. And that's a big thing uh, in our prayer life and uh, what we decide to do uh, in our prayer life is can God trust us uh, with an answer. People are praying a lot of times, God, if you would give me this position, God, I'm praying for this position. But the question is, can God trust you with that position? A lot of times we're praying, God, would you bless me financially? And uh, God's saying a lot of times, you need to get to a place where I can trust you financially. I want to bless you. We know God's word. We study God's word at all. We know that God endeavors to ever bless his people physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. God, God endeavors in his heart all the time uh, to meet the needs. He said, listen, he said, I'll, 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 I'll supply all your riches or uh, your needs according to his riches in glory. And that's what God is saying. Listen, I own it all. Uh, and I can supply you with everything you would uh, ever need according to my riches. I mean, you've never seen riches like uh, God's riches, but God says, I need to get you to a point that I can trust you uh, with that so that you take those riches and you do the will of God with them. Uh, you send them out to missionaries. You uh, send them around the world to uh, help Christians. You help the church. You, you, do, you help your... Uh, neighborhood instead of hoarding and going and getting things that uh, we should not uh, get from time to time. So a lot of times people are praying for those kind of things uh, selfishly because you know, they, they want to take care of themselves. But God says, I need to get you to a point where I can trust you with the answer that I give you uh, in the midst of this. So we look at the priority of prayer and how we ought to prioritize it. We looked at uh, the pattern of prayer and uh, the way we should pray. And I, I cannot tell you enough. Uh, listen, be responsible in your prayer life. Not only that, uh, have the best relationship you can have uh, with God uh, in your uh, prayer life. And not only that, read the Word of God and say, God, give me the things from thy Word that I should be praying for. Uh, and then be persistent in that. Uh, with God and beg God in the right way for thy will to be done and uh, God whatever you have for me I just want to be used of you I think I mentioned this last week uh, or maybe in my prayer and I've mentioned this several times a good pastor friend of mine uh, said made a statement years ago in one of the greatest revivals we've ever been in in the Burlington revival 
uh, we were there. And I remember one of his prayers specifically uh, where he said this, God, if you're going to do it, don't do it without me. Uh, and then when we get to that point, God knows then that he can trust us with that answer because we want to do it for the right cause, the right reason, uh, and we want to do it for God. So the priority of prayer, the pattern of prayer, the persistence in our uh, prayer life. This morning for a few minutes, I want to talk about uh, the place of prayer and uh, my message behind all of this. We've been putting out on Facebook and Michael has entitled this and I've told him to title this on there, uh, Praying Too Long in the Comfort Zone. Uh, and that's where most of us have gotten to uh, in our life. We kind of think it crazy sometimes when uh, the pastor would say, hey guys, let's meet at the church at six o'clock in the morning uh, for prayer. Uh, and we say, man, I listen, I can pray just as good at the house at six o'clock in the morning and I can pray just as good in my bed uh, at six o'clock uh, in the morning. And what has happened in that is we've gotten so comfortable and we've been in the comfort zone so long uh, that we just want to stay right there and uh, pray those few words we normally pray. Uh, and God's saying a lot of times, I need to get you out of that comfort zone and show you something totally different uh, in your life uh, about prayer. And so in that, uh, I wanted to look for just a little bit today on the place of prayer and where uh, we pray. I'll share another quick story with you uh, real quick. Uh, years ago, I remember we were fixing to go into a revival meeting uh, and uh, there was another pastor who was going to revival. We were uh, having, he, they were having some prayer meetings and we had gone to his house for a big prayer meeting and a bunch of bunch of us men had, I'd never done this before until that time, uh, a bunch of us men had gone out into the woods late in the afternoon to pray. The ladies were praying in the house and we wanted to see God do something uh, in the church and I'll be honest with you, at that time I was having some difficulties with some families uh, in the church and they were really just pressuring me for uh, different things and giving me a hard time and uh, I couldn't figure out what was going on uh, and I remember we went out in the woods uh, that late that afternoon to pray and it was light when we went out there uh, and we all found us a place to pray just me and out in the woods everywhere and we found us a place to pray and uh, I remember just falling on my face before God right down in the dirt begin to beg God and to start with, I thought, this is just uncommon. This is out of uh, my norm. Uh, this don't even feel right. Um, and it, it was a little awkward for me uh, to begin with. And uh, But I remember falling on my faith before God and saying, God, I'm in a different place tonight uh, because I need something different in my life. And so the norm is not going to get it. And I prayed too long in the comfort zone. God, I've got to get out of my norm. And I remember falling on my face before God in prayer late that afternoon. Uh, it was daylight when I started praying. Uh, and it was into the dark when I finished. And uh, I remember getting up from there uh, feeling relieved, uh, comforted by God uh, in the midst of that, uh, and trying to find my way uh, back out of the woods, uh, back to this pastor's house. And uh, we all met back in there and uh, through that I remember seeing God do mighty things in my life uh, because of that and so I wanted to go into this thing uh, in the place of prayer and uh, and get us to the point where we can get out of the comfort zone uh, we all probably have our little normal places that we pray maybe by our bedside or you know, maybe we pray right down the road, which I do a lot. I'll be honest with you. My prayer time in my vehicle is awesome between God and I. I can be in a prayerful state of mind for hours uh, and just talk to the Lord. It's just me and Him. Uh, but I just want to share with you several, pray several places in the Word of God uh, where God talks about prayer uh, that I believe will help us and help us get out of the comfort zone that we're in all the time and maybe try to challenge you 
to maybe from time to time change your place of prayer because you need something different in uh, your life. But in Psalm 91 and 1, uh, the Lord talks about dwelling in the secret place. I'm going to read that to you uh, real quick uh, this morning. It's one of my favorite uh, scriptures here to read. I'll be honest with you. When I look at the Word of God, I, I love uh, Psalm 90 and 91. I've read them many, many times. But Psalm 91 and 1, God said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow uh, of the Almighty. Now, what God's talking about here, he that dwelleth, he that gets along with God or is praying or remains there uh, in a hiding place or a secret place with God or gets to a place where it's just you and God and nobody else uh, and you begin to talk with God, and said, he, he that dwelleth there or remains there for uh, a period of time, he says, uh, listen, once we do that, then we'll be under the shadow uh, of the Almighty. So God is encouraging us here uh, for every Christian when we talk about the place of prayer that there ought to be some times in our life uh, that we get in the secret place, uh, just God and I. Uh, a place that nobody else knows about, a place where nobody else is, uh, is with us and we feel the presence of God and we get under the shadow uh, of the Almighty and that we dwell there uh, for some time because there, again, it can be that place where we're not rushed, we're not, nobody else is around, we're not trying to finish up, everybody else has finished their prayers and, and we're trying to finish up because of, of them and God says, hey, go there and dwell for a while. Uh, in that secret place. And so one of the places of prayer that I would encourage you to find is find you a secret place to pray uh, for God. And then in Matthew chapter number six, Matthew chapter number six here, uh, God says this in, in uh, verse number six, Matthew chapter number six, and verse number six, he said, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And so God is encouraging us here, the Lord Jesus Christ here is encouraging us not only to find that secret place, but he talks here about the closet, a place that's separate from everything else, a place that nobody else is around. In studying all this, no doubt God has revealed to me uh, the, the importance here of being alone with God. Now, I've said this many, many times uh, that uh, praying alone, uh, sometimes we've got to be careful with that, but, and I mean it in this way because I think it's Jude, uh, verse number 19 or verse 20. Uh, one, of the, one of the others says, pray in the Holy Ghost. And so if we're going to go in the closet, uh, we need to make sure that we, the Holy Ghost is with us. If we're going to go in the secret place and uh, go ask God in secret, then I think we ought to make sure uh, that the Holy Ghost is with us. Uh, when we go in there. Uh, but I would encourage you uh, to try to find in your home uh, or somewhere uh, a place where you can go in sometimes, close the door. He says here to shut the door behind you. Uh, and when you get in there, just pray in secret to God and, and just alone with you and God, forget about everything else around you. Most of the time, it's that when I think about a closet, I think about that tight space. Uh, real closed off. It's not a big wide open building uh, out there. It's that real tight, close knit place uh, where you just snuggle up real close to God. God snuggles up real close to uh, you. He meets you in that little uh, place right there. You can feel the presence of God right there beside you uh, when you do that. That is the one thing I will tell you openly that I have tried to encourage myself in. Uh, I have tried to discipline myself in. Uh, there is not every day that God encouraged me to go in my closet and pray. But there are days that God does impress upon my heart. Today is one of those days you need to go in your closet and pray uh, and get along with me. And so God has helped me with that already uh, through this. And there are days that God says, hey, you need to be in that secret place uh, and just go find you a place nobody else knows about uh, and just you and God. I, I'll say this 
uh, another little story here years ago before we built this sanctuary that I'm in today. Uh, we were originally in the building process of this and all of this area here in front of the church was woods. Uh, there's many, many days, many a day uh, that nobody knew. And I stopped by here and I had a place out in the woods, secret place out in the woods where I went and met with God uh, day after day about this particular building that we're in right now uh, and what God would have us to do. And uh, through that secret place there, meeting with God, God answered many of prayers in our life and allowed us to be where we are today uh, and allowed me to be in this building that we prayed about this morning. We're 17 years later now. We're fixing to celebrate 17 years uh, here at the church. And so here we are 17, 18, almost 18 years later uh, when I was praying. And now that place that I prayed about in that secret place out in the woods there has been established. Uh, we've been able to worship here. There's been many souls saved here. Uh, I mean, many people join the church here. Uh, I, I mean, God's done mighty wonders work through that just, just because of praying uh, in the secret place. Or then, then pray it in the closet. Go to the door. Go to the closet. Shut the door and pray. Mark chapter 1, uh, verse number 35. Let me, let, me, let, me look, let me look at that real quick. Mark chapter number 1, uh, verse number 35 here. The Bible says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and parted, departed into a solitary place and there prayed. A place of solitude. Uh, a place where you can meditate. A place where you can just think on these things. A place where there's no disturbance. Uh, a place where you can sit back and, and think about the things you've done and uh, where you're headed, uh, where you're going, what you want your life uh, to be. And when we begin to pray uh, in that, a lot of times time we, we go before God and because we got something right here in front of us that I need to handle right now. I need to handle it right now. Uh, I read these uh, Facebook posts a lot of times and uh, the, and the people that's never prayed. I've never, never seen these people on that praying or asking for prayer. And all of a sudden, there's that thing that faces them and they're all of a sudden asking for prayer. I, I need to pray for this. They got that one specific thing where God says, hey, there's time. You need to get alone in a place by yourself, make it a solitary place where you can reflect on the things God has done and you need to beg God for those things that are coming in your life. Uh, get in a solitary place and beg God to help you because those days are going to come. That way we don't have to wait for the last minute and go, oh my goodness, I need prayer, I need prayer. I need help right now, I need help right now. Oh, that's okay. But God said, hey, get in that solitary place. Think about your life. Think about where you've been. Think about where you're going. Think about your family. Think about your marriage. Think about your children. Think about their relationships. Think about your finances. Think about your future. Think about your church. God, I just need to get along and just pray and meditate. Be in a solitary place. Nobody else around, God. Let me be alone with you in the midst of that. And then the fourth place today, and I'll finish with this right here because I don't want to keep it too long today. Uh, I just want to try to bring a short message if I could. Uh, but another place of prayer is in Luke chapter number 6. Luke chapter number 6 and verse number 12. And uh, I think this is this is good for us right here. That if we look at this right here, Luke chapter number 6 and verse number 12. Let me read that to you today. The Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. And listen to this. And continued all night in prayer to God. I think there are times that we need to pray on the mountaintop. Uh, there are times that we need to just get up where, and listen, I don't know about you, but I, I love the mountains. I love going to the mountains, and people always say this, boy, when I'm up there, I know I'm closer to God because I'm, I'm higher up the hill, and that has some truth to it physically, <laughs> uh, but it has no truth to it spiritually. Uh, and what he's saying here is he went up onto a mountain to pray. Now, here's what I'm going to say to this. Most of the time, 
that we only pray when we're in the valley uh, and things are going wrong and we need help and we're trying to find God. But I believe God is trying to encourage us here in this too, is listen, right on top of the mountaintop when everything is going good, when life is grand, uh, when we feel our best, uh, when our marriage is at its best, when our finances are at their best, when our church is full, uh, when the worship is outstanding, God says, still pray. When you're up on the mountain, sometimes you go to the mountain. Uh, I love what he told Moses over there. It took me years to figure this out. Over there in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number three, I believe it is. And uh, God looked at Moses and said, you've been on this mountain long enough, move northward. Now, I, I always thought about that and said, God, if Moses is already on the mountain, why in the world is, is he going to move northward? God said, there's a greater mountain over there. There's a greater place. And I believe that when we're on the greatest mountain we could be on, whether it be in the church, whether it be in our spiritual life, uh, whether it be in our marriage, whether it be with our kids and all of our relationships are good. Uh, listen, finances are good. The bills are paid. Uh, the church is going well. Uh, the people are coming. The, the worship is outstanding. The singing is, uh, is just off the hook. God says, pray, pray. When you're up on that mountain, we need not forget God when we get on the mountain. Because too many times we beg God to get out of the valley. We get up on the mountain. We catch ourselves just running wild, doing anything we want to do. And we completely forget about God. And so I want to encourage you this morning. If you're on the mountain, if, you, God, if God's got you up there, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget who got you there. And so I want to encourage the church this morning, New Life Baptist Church. Our friends, our family, the people that we love dearly in our lives, everybody that watches this, wherever you are today, I want to encourage you today on a snowy Sunday. We can't be in church. Uh, the roads are too bad. I want to encourage you today to go find you a place of prayer sometime today. It may be out in the barn. Men, it may be out in your shop somewhere. Women, it may be in the laundry room, the one place that you hate the most. It may be in there that you say, you know what, I'm going to the one place that I don't even like, but I'm going to get along with God. Kids, it may be in your room instead of being on the cell phone. Get along with God. Run to that mountain today. Run to that secret place. Run to that closet. Run to that solitary place. These are all places that the Lord Jesus Christ himself went and prayed and ask us to do the same thing. So I want to beg you again on a snowy Sunday. Can't be in church. Can't come and worship together. Go find you a place to worship with your God on this day and enjoy your time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Share this with everybody that you can today. I want to pray for you real quick and we're going to close the video. Father, we love you. And God, what an honor, what a privilege it is to be in thy house, Lord, once again this morning. God, I know we don't have an audience here today, but God, I pray that we'll have a great audience on Facebook today. And God, that these people that watch this will be encouraged, that our church family will be encouraged today. Uh, and God, we'll realize how important prayer is. We'll go find us a place today, God, in our closet, in the secret place, in the solitary place, God, on the mountain. And God, even if things are, are the best they've ever been, uh, God, we'll take that run with it. We'll just go to the mountain, start praying and begging God, uh, Lord, just, just to not let us forget that uh, and to keep us uh, and to help us and to thank him over and over again uh, for what he has done. Bless our people today. Keep them safe on the road that they do have to travel out. God, give them encouragement today. Meet their need there in their homes today. May family pray with family, kids with kids today, moms and dads uh, together, husband and wives together today. Father, let them find a place of prayer today and God be encouraged through that. And Lord, let me be a better pastor, a better preacher, a better servant and a better leader, God, to our people. And Father, we'll thank you and love you for what you've done for us. And God, all that you're gonna do, we praise you for it right now. We ask all these things in Christ's wonderful name. Amen. We love you today. Share this video.